Hello everyone. Welcome to China Observer. I'm your host, Ben Christensen. Living in an eggshell sounds warm and cozy, but it is as fragile as it seems. Dunka Apartment, which means eggshell in Chinese, is the second largest long-term rental apartment platform in China, with more than 430,000 apartments under its management in 13 major Chinese cities. It is also the first choice of many college graduates and young white-collar workers known for its affordable prices and quality. The dissolve of Danke came too sudden that many of these tenants have not prepared for the eviction. Many similar posts appeared on Chinese social media platforms, stating they were disconnected from electricity and water. Some landlords pry open the doors of the apartment and drive the tenants out into the winter streets. These young people's nightmare didn't end when they moved out of their apartments. Many continued to have to make monthly mortgage payments. Why? Because these tenants have signed a risky contract. On the superficial level, Danke is a massive enterprise listed in the U.S. Stock Exchange with good financial reports. In its prospectus filed with the U.S. Stock Exchange last October, Ant Financial, run by the Chinese celebrity entrepreneur Jack Ma, was a strategic investor in Danke Apartments, holding a 7.8% stake. On January 17th this year, Danke Apartments just landed on the New York Stock Exchange, raising about 978 million RMB. As of the first quarter of this year, it has more than 430,000 rooms under management and has served more than 1 million users. Danke has gained such a large market share mainly because of the relatively low rent it offers, but that is exactly the pitfall. The tenants are mostly recent college graduates and lack social experience, which makes them easily fall prey to the rhetoric of Danke agents and signing what is in fact a rent loan. In other words, the tenant signs a rental contract that actually includes applying for a loan from a financial institution, which pays one year's rent and a deposit in advance to Danke. One of the long-term rental loan partners with Danke is WeBank, a Tencent company. Here's how the mechanism works: Danke pays monthly rent to the landlord with the funds provided by the bank, and the tenant pays back the loan to the bank every month through the rental loan. Danke gets the long-term rent and deposit from financial institutions one-off, and uses them for business expansion or reinvestment, which comes with risks. This is how it all started. Danke may have lost its investment. Now, Danke did not pay the rent to the landlord on time, so the landlord argued that they could not let the tenants live in their apartments without receiving rent. However, Danke chose to conceal the facts. On one hand, Danke deceives the landlords by saying that the landlord can clear the tenant by terminating the contract with them. While on the other hand, deceiving the tenant by saying that even if the landlord terminates the contract with Danke, the tenant still has the right to continue living in the apartment. This way, Danke obtains representation from the landlord at above market rates, pays the landlord one month's rent or one quarter's rent, and then competes for the tenants at a lower rent. This creates a larger pool of money for Danke to invest. And they would use the investment income to make up for the difference in rent and earn profit from it, or perhaps it never intended to pay back the money. This is like a Ponzi scheme. When the money chain breaks, the bubble will burst. In less than a year, tenants could not find Donkey's staff, who promised they would help. The offices were empty, and the landlords began contacting tenants directly to ask for rent, or they will be asked to leave. In the past ten days, many people have been protesting in front of Donkey's Beijing headquarters to defend their rights. Including landlords, tenants, cleaning and maintenance staff of the company. In fact, Danke is not the only case. Since the beginning of this year, seven or eight well-known long-term rental apartments in China have been widening up one after another. The Chinese media also commented that long-term rental platforms have been dissolving in many cities like mudslides. They mentioned that the model first emerged in 2015 and has since become rapidly popular, with a number of well-known companies joining the carnival. And within two years. From 2016 to 2018, the total number of such platforms have increased by over 300. Don't you see the operational risks of this model? People in the industry have been aware of this for a long time. In 2018, a former vice president of a well-known Chinese real estate company, Hu Jinghe, warned that the dissolving of long-term rental platforms will be worse than the P2P crisis. P2P refers to online lending platforms that allow private individuals to lend money to other individuals or companies in exchange for high interest returns. Last year, this sector experienced a similar large-scale meltdown in China and was called by Chinese people as the Chinese Communist Party-led state 
level Ponzi scheme, wiping out tens of billions of dollars of the people involved. WeBank, which involved in the Danke crisis, responded by suggesting that if tenants' legal rights are being infringed, they should take legal action to protect their legitimate rights. But the tenants are facing the question of who can really protect their rights. Some tenants have recounted on social media that when they become aware of the pitfalls of rental loan, Danke personnel excuse themselves for various reasons, even some claiming that they have left the company. When asked about the issue, Danke either blamed the employee for not taking care of the problem personally, or claimed that everything is following the contract to avoid responsibility. Faced with these evasive techniques, the young tenants find it hard to cope. Until now, tenants have seen no help from the government, department, or agencies, and their calls to the police have gone unanswered, some of whom get an answer, take care of yourselves. The young people were forced to lay down their dignity and decency just to secure a place to live. There is also an interesting phenomenon when the victims try to seek for help on social media. They often have to first declare themselves patriotic and then state in the postings that they have no opposition to the government because they are afraid to be labeled by the government as provocative and troublesome, a common charge in Chinese arrests of protesters. If you look closely at the current economic model of China, you will find that the Donkey Crisis is only one of the small cases. China's current economic model is a loop of investment credit debt, which means when the major market suffers from a debt crisis, it will trigger a chain reaction. That is too big for the Chinese government to monitor or solve. The Chinese people would have to bear the risk themselves. On October 24th this year, Chinese Vice President Wang Qishan said at a financial conference in Shanghai that finance is the core of the modern economy and stressed that China's financial sector cannot follow the crooked path of speculation and gambling or Ponzi schemes. When senior leaders of the Chinese Communist Party come out to talk about a certain issue, it often means the crisis has been too big to cover up or solve. The Chinese people often liken themselves to leeks, which will always grow after being cut and harvested by the government with scythe, a symbol of communism. People satirize themselves as the rich and powerful's money-making machine, and the young people who suffer from the Danke crisis are fresh leaks who have just entered society. Many of the victims of the eggshell apartment explosion were a little pink, which means the young people who follow red communism. But now, some of them suddenly realize their love for the party could not make them warm in winter. For instance, this young woman who often criticizes America for nothing on social media now writes, It's minus degrees, and I got to move in the cold wind. Can we let Danke at large? Who is going to protect us, the disadvantaged group? Well, she may never get an answer from her beloved party. Thank you for watching China Observer. We'll see you next time.